what's going on everybody welcome to the channel and the video review of the King Kong 90 GT the 90 millimeter brushless FPV racer with the DSM 2 receiver now this comes with the FR Sky receiver or you can get it in the DSM 2 receiver is the one that I have or no receiver at all and this thing has a very nice setup guys it has a two millimeter carbon fiber frame with the uh, micro f3 6 dof flight controller and it is connected to an all-in-one pdb with a four-in-one bl heli s3 amp escs built in so you don't see any of the uh, escs on the arm so everything is built in now what you see right on the top here is the the vtx transmitter and there's a button to change the channels and the frequency i believe it is just a single button to change the light configuration and it is a 16 channel vtx and the dipole antenna is coming off of it and what it looks like is a zip tie tied to the upper uh plate to hold the antenna in place so that is really nice and it is pretty nice so it can bend and it can pop right up bend to the other side and pops right up how cool is that now what we have here is the brushless motors and it is the 1103 7800 kv motors and it is the king kong brand self-branded brushless motors which looks really nice and the stem is right on the top and yes there's holes there so i'm thinking the props are going to be a screwed on prop so that is really cool now there is the 800 tv l 150 degrees field of view cmos camera and of course this is the 5.8 gigahertz 16 channel and it is the 25 milliwatt transmitter and the receiver is the dsm2 like i said and it is connected with the s bus wire right onto the i believe that is the ur2 port and as you can see the fc is on the second level there and it is soldered on via those pins and if you can see that shiny standoff right on the inside there i don't know if you can see that there you go there's a shiny standoff right there and there's another uh, shiny standoff on the inside and you can probably see that uh, those screws on the bottom that is one of the screws of the standoff right there and there's the other uh, those are the pins there and there's the four screws holding down the standoffs what it looks like is a very nice build uh, the power is siphoned off uh, directly from the board there on the bottom that's probably a five volt for the vtx and what we have here is the battery plug and it is the the 2s balance plug and not a jst plug so that is a little different um of course you can always go in there and desolder those and solder on solder on a uh, jst plug if you want to change it uh there's a couple of more ports of, on the fc on the right side and of course this is the vcc uh, pinholes there and this big port over here is the pwm ppm as well as the led light port there and right on the top right there there is the the boot loader button press that to uh, load a new firmware and let's take a look at the bottom here okay here we have the the dsm2 receiver and what it looks like it's stuck on some double-sided tape but this side of the tape is not peeled off so they are allowing you to either uh, stick it down here 
or maybe you can actually take it off and then um, stick it up here if you want but there's a little bit of a recess area from the board and the uh, the PDB so and I'm thinking that's why they put it right in there and as you can see uh, there's the screw right there and the screw right here uh, those were the two screws uh, for the standoffs right in between the FC and the PDB and those are the uh, the pins that is connecting the FC and the PDB together so that is around it for the quadcopter man I have to say this quadcopter is solid and it looks like a big quadcopter but in a smaller size doesn't it so that is really cool now let's put this on the side and let's check out what we got here we have the instruction manual and the instruction manual has it in Chinese and English there you go there's the product overview the configuration and also the uh, the color combo and the 16 channels corresponding to the color combo of the LED light on the VTX 16 channels 25 milliwatts and these are the items that you get in the packing list and a diagram of how the motors are and a notice to use M2 screws and M2 three screws without the propeller protection cover so when you put on the the prop guards you have to use a different size screw and if you're not using it you have to use a different size screw so you don't um, damage the motors of uh, the length of the screw here is the, the f3 flight controller diagram and that's what it looks like there and also the firmware update how to and the default settings on beta flight so that is a really nice little uh, manual there now the quadcopter came just like that it was sitting right in there just like that so that is really nice nice little foam and this is the DSM-2 version there's another big box on the side let's take that out and check that out Okay. there's a lot of stuff in there there you go there's the, uh, the props and yes it is a screw on type props comes with the screws and looks like there's two sets of props in here so that's cool and we have the USB uh, micro USB uh, cable so, and we have the, the prop guards all right so can have a choice of putting the prop guards on if you want and the connection screws and little washers as well so let's put that on the side and there's another bag uh, yes this is the uh, the plug for that um, PWM PPM port wires so that's cool okay let's take a look at the second box the second box contains some extra rubber bands yeah this quadcopter came with this big fat rubber band to hold down the um, the the receiver and to hold down your battery and it is right underneath of here so if you want to change the rubber band you're gonna to have to take off the uh, the whole top via these screws in order to slide the rubber bands in and put it back so that is a little bit of a work but nonetheless they give you two extra big fat rubber band and the prop removal tool and another little stick on sticker for the uh, the transmitter um, channels so we can stick it on somewhere to your liking and what we have is the battery all right so we have one battery and it is the 350 milliamp 7.4 volt 
battery and it does have the JST plug but this is the plug that you will use to plug into the uh, quadcopter all right so that is everything that came in the box all right so I'm putting the the prop guard together and it comes with these little pieces here to put in between those circular pieces or semi circular pieces and you snap those in and put it all together and now you have one solid um, prop guard and you attach these to the motor screws on the bottom so you need to take the motor screws off in order to attach the other uh, prop guards on there if you're going to fly indoors so there I'm not going to put this on I'm going to fly outdoors um, I try to fly brushless uh, micros inside the house and you know what that's just not me I'm going too fast in the house to maneuver these fast brushless uh, micro quadcopters so I'm flying these outdoors all right so but that's how you put together the uh, the prop guards all right I got it powered on now to check out the VTX so right now it's blinking red and red so that is the first channel on the list there so if you hit that button now it's blinking red and green hit it again it's blinking red and blue and it's going right down the line red and clear and then green and red green and green green and blue and so on until the 16 channels and it loops around again so that is how you set the channels on this transmitter all right let's take a look at the receiver this is the dsm2 receiver and as you can see there's that tiny little bind button um, you can kind of feel it being depressed as you can see it going up and down there so you, what you want to do is depress it and hold it and power up the quadcopter at the same time that will put the, uh, the receiver in a binding mode and at which time you want to bind it with your transmitter I'm using the Tyrannus so this is a DSM2 receiver so what I want to do is take off the back cover put my orange RX module put the antenna on there and on the orange RX module there is the bind button so you ha have to depress the bind button and you already have the model set up and with the external module and PPM and turn on the transmitter at the same time while depressing the bind button on the orange RX module and you will bind with that DSM2 receiver on the quadcopter and once you have done that the next time you um, want to fly the quadcopter what you need to do is turn on the quadcopter and do the same thing again hit that bind button and turn on the um, the Tyrannus at the same time and that will bind you to the quadcopter so you have to do that every time you go out and fly unfortunately all right so after you have successfully uh, bounded the quadcopter to your transmitter what you want to do next is um, get that USB to micro USB cable that was supplied and plug it into this micro USB port right here and the other end of the cable the USB um, portion of the cable connected to your computer and go into beta flight and do your configurations to your liking set up your modes and as well as adjust your PIDs and whatnot so here is some screenshots of the beta flight configurator okay I just wanted to say one thing before I screw on the last prop I've already screwed on three props um, I placed the prop in that shaft and even without the screws it is a very very solid fit it is tight and these screws just uh, put that much more security onto the props and that is really nice all right, all of the props are installed and I forgot to mention these are the 1935 props that come with the quadcopter and they are the clear red and we are ready to rock. 
All right, everything is put back together and it's ready to go. I've already calibrated the ESCs in beta flight. And what I decided was uh, on the receiver, I just left the receiver on the recess area right underneath. And I did peel off the double-sided tape to uh, have it stay on there and not move. But what I did was I put a little piece of foam right on top of it and hot glued it onto the standoff screws. So now there's a little barrier between the battery and the receiver as well. And the battery is resting on something nice and soft instead of those uh, standoff screws. All right. Now let's see how much this thing weighs all together. All right, the quadcopter by itself uh, with that little foam pad that I added on is coming in at 49 grams. And with the addition of the battery that it came with is weighing in at 70 grams. And if you want to add the prop guards as well, it will come in at 76 grams. All right, so that is it. So let's take it outside for a line of sight test as well as some FPV flying. All right, let's power this baby up. I'm using a different battery here. So it's a little tricky to plug it in. All right, we got the battery plugged in and I got my orange RX module attached already. And there's the bind button and turn on the transmitter. Welcome to OpenTX. Alright, that should do it. Alright. I'm using a battery from the uh, Fury B Wasp quadcopter. So it, I believe it's a 400 milliamp size battery. Very nice. Very nice. Nice and stable. And if you got different size batteries with the uh, 2S uh, balance plug, you can use it on this quadcopter as well. So, and I have a few of those, so it's really nice. Yeah, man, this thing is very stable, guys. Nice. There's a little bit of wind, about five miles an hour winds, and this thing is doing fine. It doesn't even bother this guy here. It's got lots of power. I'm at around 50% throttle, maybe about 55% throttle here. And it's doing fantastic. Okay, give it a little power punch. Oh man, this thing's got lots of power. All right. I think the battery is slightly crooked, but it doesn't even feel that. Oh man, this thing's got lots of power, man. Okay, bring it back in here. To a 100% power punch. Oh wow, awesome. <laughs> it's so small and yet so powerful. Wow. Oh shit. Excuse my language. Nice. <laughs> nice. Lots and lots of power. Wow. Wow, wow. All right, let's bring it in closer here. Switch over to horizon mode. Horizon mode is half uh, angle mode and half acro. So if you pitch uh, really far up or far down, it'll do flips or rolls. So let's check out the flips. Nice. So it's a really fun mode. There you go. Nice. Man, you can do this all day, huh? Very nice. 
that was horizon mode now let's switch over to acro mode and it is very stable too with very good control in acro mode look at how stable it is nice Yeah, very nice, very nice. Woohoo! Very nice. Let me bring it back in here. Losing orientation. Nice. Pretty easy to control in acro mode too. Nice with the stock PIDs. Very nice, very nice. All right, going back to angle mode. Nice and speedy, man. All right, let's bring it in and put on some goggles. And I'm gonna use the, uh, the battery that came with the quadcopter to do the FPV. But look at that, five miles an hour winds and it doesn't even notice the wind. Nice. Okay, see if I can land it. There we go.